As a sweet who spent his summer solstice jumping around a midsummer pole, dancing like a frog while playing WoW Hung over the next day, I feel like it's my duty to report on the absolute best event of the year for raiders in Classic WoW. Not only is it a time to go out to complete the achievements for that Violet Protodrake, but it's also a time to chase your oh-so-precious Parsis. This video is not a guide on how to complete the Midsummer achievements, so for that, you'll have to go elsewhere. This is a video about how to utilize this time-limited event to do more damage in raid and to help with progression towards your raiding characters. First, a small little public service announcement. You can cosplay as a Swede in-game to gain a 10% experience buff to help you in the process of leveling an alt. All you have to do is to head to a capital city, press the pole, and AFK for a bit as you stack up the buff to 1 hour before going off to level. I'm currently doing this with my paladin alt along with the head and cloak heirlooms and rest of experience while soloing Halls of Lightning in order to get anywhere between 6.5 to 7.5 million experience per hour depending on how focused I am. Then once you reach 85, you can instantly queue for a Hoon to pick up a 353 item level cloak which will tide most classes over until you start raiding. These cloaks drops from the boss itself, and it's not tied to the daily bag reward, so it can be repeated until you get it. Speaking of the daily reward bag, you also have a chance of getting the Frost Scythe of Lord Ahun in there, which, apart from being pretty sweet looking for transmog purposes, will actually be a quite decent starter weapon for casters if you manage to get your hands on one. It doesn't have any intellect, so it's definitely not amazing. But not having any intellect also means it has a grand total of 700 stamina, making it the highest stamina item in the game. So make with that what you will. But if you're here looking to increase your parses, then none of the previous things mentioned will help you in your quests for pink and gold numbers. But that is where the Midsummer Will buffs comes in. The Midsummer event is associated with a ton of buffs, and if you've been running around leveling during this event, I'm sure you've noticed random buffs being applied which actually does a considerable amount of damage. But some of these buffs can actually be brought into a raiding environment. First we have the Midsummer food buffs. These are small little buffs that can be used alongside your normal food and doesn't share a buff slot with anything else in the game. For one burning blossom per buff, you can pick up 20 dodge, 20 hits, 30 haste, and 44 spell power. Some specs will definitely have more use from these buffs than others, as you can have all four of these active at once if you'd like. Personally on my bloody K, I'm picking up the dodge, hit, and haste as they all have benefit to me in some capacity. As I mentioned earlier, you purchase these with Burning Blossoms, which is the Midsummer Currency. The easiest way to get these is to fly around the world to honor and extinguish flames for 5 to 10 blossoms per fire. This is faster than you expect as each zone will have both a horde and an alliance fire to click, and if you're hunting for the staff for transport purposes, you will also get a bunch of them in your completion bag every day. If you're worried about already having completed the fires for the achievement in Wrath, the quests are reset so you can go out and farm to your heart's content. They actually also give quite decent gold if you are running low on funds. The second thing that these blossoms are used for is the big one for raiders, and that is to consume a blossom at a midsummer fire. Doing this will give you a 3% crit buff and a chance to reflect a minor amount of damage while hit. 3% crit at this part of the expansion is absolutely huge and it does stack with other effects. One thing to keep in mind is that using a flask overrides this buff. But as long as you have a flask before you use the buff, then you will keep it. It does fade if you die, so don't be a Pepega and die to the first boss. And don't be the guy who mysteriously finds himself back in Ogremar between pulls asking for a summon back. And there we go, a nice little short video to give you a bit of an edge in your next raid. And if you're a bloody Kate looking to increase your output in your next raid, then you may enjoy this video I released a while ago with 4 tips to help you increase your damage. But that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time.